So is Daenerys' dragon just like flying around now with her body like in its claws because that's a little weird. I gotta just say that really quick. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Linny D again, and today I wanted to talk about the Game of Thrones finale because I am a actor, I'm a media student, theater student, I'm basically an entertainment major, so I thought I'd give my little two cents. As you've probably been able to see, the title is I'm Not Mad, I'm Disappointed, and that technically applies more to the previous episode than it does to this final episode, but, you know, the title still, like, is related to how everything turned out, so I decided to keep it. I should mention that, like, all things considered, the way that all the chips fell in, like, the very last episode with, like, who was leader and stuff, I actually think that worked out pretty well. It was kind of, like, I think the way that the char like the characters responded and, like, salvaged the situation was pretty good because, like, I think the people who ended up in power are some people who should have been, and that kind of thing, you know, like, uh, no one would really expect for, like, Bran to become king. But I also think that that was probably a wise decision on everybody's part, since, um, he's picked up so much wisdom, you know, becoming the Three-Eyed Raven and having all the stories and the history. I think that does make it a really smart decision to make him the leader, because they always talk about how people don't learn from mistakes or people don't learn from history and that's what I think makes him that could make him a good leader is that he um he has all this history so like going forward with all that knowledge that he has and all that wisdom like he can really make the right decision he can make new decisions and same with like um you know the people who ended up like part of his uh Council, I think that they picked a lot of good people to do it because just the people that they have chosen are, um, will I think, you know, handle things in a smart way. Um, but yeah, I'm also, I'm, there's just a few character arcs specifically that I've been a bit disappointed in. So the reason I recalled it, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed, is mainly because of the last episode when Daenerys decided to go crazy and, uh, burn the whole city down and stuff. It's not that I'm mad or disappointed that she became a bad guy because like some people said something about how it was like unfeminist to make the women the bad guys or something um that's not the thing that i didn't like it was specifically the way they did it the game of thrones is you know the westeros is a really gritty world so of course you have to be a certain amount hard to be able to survive and to lead there of course but it's more the thing that i didn't like is um kind of how it was so last minute. It was like literally the episode before the finale was when they decided to like make her the mad queen. That seems really like last minute. Even when you consider those things that she did that were more, that would seem more cruel and gritty because of just the way it is. And like I said, the hardness of the Westeros, like it seemed very fast to have her just suddenly go from like only going after mainly like bad people, people who actually like abuse their power and stuff, to just like burning down an entire city, you know what I mean? Like, it just seemed very fast to sort of make almost this 180 in character development. The next one that I want to talk about right now is uh, Jamie Lannister, because the whole series, it's always been the whole thing with like him and Cersei and the whole like incest love thing. When they decided to put him with um, Brienne. It was kind of supposed to be like, I guess last part of his redemption arc or whatever you want to call it. When he goes off with Brienne, it's like he's finally moved on from Cersei, but then like to have him turn around and then finally, and then go back to her at the very end, that just seemed a little short-sighted, let's say. It seemed a little short-sighted. Like they just kind of decided, okay, we're just gonna make him go back to Cersei and they will die in each other's arms and that'll be like the big dramatic ending for them. And like, from a writer standpoint, I get that. I see how that would be cinematic and seemingly romantic or whatever, but Cersei's death was disappointing. That should have been better. Let's just leave it at that. They kind of like did the character an injustice and I feel like they did the same thing to Brienne. They kind of did some injustice to her. I'm really happy in the final season that, you know, they knighted her and they made her one of the leaders uh, with the council. But like the way that they kind of kept building into her romantic interest in Jamie and stuff, firstly, I didn't totally love that. That's a different thing. But the way they kind of like gave him to her for like one episode, then took him back away and, you know, put him back with Cersei just seemed 
I don't know, it just seemed really weird because like, she's just a strong woman, you know, who can fight and, you know, is like defying the gender boundaries and stuff like that. And so to just like first throw a romantic plot line at her and then to just like have her, you know, have it taken away. Again, it's like doing the character an injustice because such a great character. I love her. She's actually just one of my favorites. Like a really weak way to move her character along, I would say. I don't know, that was disappointing. Yeah, I think I really covered all three things that, all three character arcs that really disappointed me. It was Daenerys just so quickly 180ing into the bad guy, Jaime also to making a 180 and sort of, you know, going back to his sister, and then uh, Brienne just getting kind of screwed over by Jaime and just generally by the writers. Quick side note though, I would watch the hell out of Arya's like, a spinoff. I would totally watch a spinoff about her exploring beyond the Westeros. I don't think that they're gonna do that, but I just wanted to mention that I think that'd be cool. They, like she says, that's where the map ends, so I think it'd be really interesting to see what is beyond there. Tyrion lived, so I think firstly that was great. <laughs> he's always been one of my favorites. I think he's just so interesting as a character. I think he's really fleshed out. I think his acting performance is excellent, so I'm really glad that he both lived and got to be the hand to the king since um it's like i think he's learned like they talk about he's learned so much from his whole life that i think it's cool that that's happened i think it's a good thing that um the north is remaining its own separate kingdom and i also think that it's pretty awesome that uh sansa is now the queen of it because like her as a character i didn't actually like very much in the earlier seasons i thought she was kind of two-dimensional and kind of boring but it's been really cool like how she's sort of come into her, her own as a woman and as a leader and everything so having her like queen of the north in the finale and just like seeming like this powerful wise leader i think is pretty awesome so i'm really i'm really happy about that honestly i think Jon snow's ending was pretty appropriate for him having him exiled up into the back into the north and back to the night's watch i think that's really the most appropriate ending they could have given him because like where else did he have to go at this point i don't think he would have been work i don't think it would have been good for him to rule with daenerys or whatever i don't think he would have been cut out to lead the north either as like the king of the north there's my dog I think he's a good leader for things like in the military sense, like the Night's Watch and things, but I don't think he is like a king. I don't think he knows enough about diplomacy and things to be a king. And so I think just sending him back to where he started is really the best way for it to come, his story to come full circle. Uh, with the way that things turned out, I still think that the right people came out on top. So I think like overall, it's okay, but it's like, really for the final season after all this lead up, you know, with the previous seasons, I would really call my feeling on it just kind of lukewarm. It's like, they kind of screwed up two episodes before the finale and then they had to turn around and salvage it. So it was just kind of messy. Let's just call it messy. Okay, can I just say really quick though, like who else had trouble telling all these different white dudes apart? Cause like a bunch of white men with British accents and facial hair and curly dark hair. Like I only have been able to tell apart like six of them. I only have been able to recognize like what? Jon Snow, Joffrey, Bran, like so that's really the main guys. Like anytime that there's just some random like white guy with curly dark hair in the screen, I'm like, who is this guy? Which one is he? Do we like him? The casting directors just picked a lot of people, male wise, who look really similar. I don't know, <laughs> raise your hand if you think that it was hard to tell some of these guys apart or give this video a like. I'm not here to do the whole like and subscribe thing, but yeah.